Welcome to Music History Monday for March 14th, 2022. I'm Bob Greenberg, and the title for today's podcast is Jörg Philipp Telemann. If you haven't already, please consider joining me on my subscription site at patreon.com slash Robert Greenberg Music, where I blog, vlog, podcast, pontificate, review, and bloviate four to six times a week. We mark the birth on March 14, 1681, 341 years ago today, of the German composer Jörg Philipp Telemann in the city of Magdeburg in what today is central Germany. A contemporary of Johann Sebastian Bach and George Frederick Handel, both of whom Telemann numbered as good friends, Bach's son, Karl Philipp Emanuel, was both the godson and namesake of Jörg Philipp Telemann. Telemann was considered in his lifetime the greatest composer living and working in Germany, with our friend Sebastian Bach well down on that list. Telemann died in Hamburg on June 25, 1767, at the age of 86. Jörg Philipp was the youngest of three surviving children, two boys and a girl, of Maria and Heinrich Telemann. Young Telemann came from a long line of Protestant clergymen. His mother Maria's father was a deacon, and his father Heinrich Telemann was a Lutheran pastor, as was Heinrich's father before him. Sadly, Heinrich Telemann died in his late 30s in 1685, when Jörg Philipp was just four years old, and the task of raising and providing for the family fell squarely on Maria Telemann's shoulders. Single mothers are usually, by necessity, a tough bunch, and in this, Maria Telemann was no exception. Despite the fact that her youngest child, Jörg Philipp, displayed prodigious musical talents from a young age, she took it for granted that like his father and both his grandfathers before him, young Telemann was destined for the cloth and a career in the clergy. But as is so often the case, the young Jörg Philipp Telemann had other ideas. By the age of 12, he had been taught to sing and play keyboards. He had as well taught himself to play recorder, violin, and zither, and on his own had learned the principles of composition sufficiently to have composed various arias, motets, and instrumental works. At the age of 12, he composed his first opera entitled Sigismundus to a libretto by the German poet and librettist Christian Heinrich Postel. In 1739, the 58-year-old Telemann wrote a brief autobiography. Regarding his opera, Sigismundus, he wrote, quote, This opera was performed with a measure of éclat on an improvised stage, with me singing a rather arrogant version of my own hero. I really would like to see that music now, unquote. That's some serious talent, but rather than be proud of her precocious son and his musical aspirations, Mama Telemann freaked out. Terrified that Jörg Philipp was headed for a career in music, having produced his opera at the age of 12, his mother forbade him from having any further contact with music and confiscated his musical instruments. Telemann later described it this way. Quote, done. Music and instruments were whisked away, and with them, half my very life. Unquote. But Jörg Philipp was wily, or at least so he thought he was. He composed secretly at night and practiced on borrowed instruments in seclusion. Quote, my fire burned far too brightly and lighted my way into the path of innocent disobedience, so that I spent many a night with pen in hand because I was forbidden it by day, and passed many an hour in lonely places with borrowed instruments." Unquote. But in the end, Jörg Philipp fooled no one, 
not least his mother Maria, who was enraged by her son's innocent disobedience. Extreme measures were called for. So she wrote her husband's old friend and university classmate, Caspar Calvert, in the town of Zellerfeld, about 50 miles southwest of Magdeburg. Calvert was the superintendent of the school there in Zellerfeld, and he agreed to not just accept the now 13-year-old Jörg Philipp, but to personally oversee his education. We imagine that Maria Telemann sighed with relief. Calvert was a theologian, historian, mathematician, and a writer with a number of scientific papers and publications to his credit. Maria would seem to have had no idea that Calvert had applied himself as well to his study of music and had written several papers on medieval music theory. Oops. According to Telemann biographer Richard Petzold, Jörg Philipp Telemann, Oxford University Press, 1974, quote, Caspar Calvert rejoiced at his protege's musical gift. With Calvert's approval, the boy once again set about practicing his instruments, regularly writing pieces for the church choir, as well as works for the town musicians and occasional pieces for celebrations, weddings, and the like." Unquote. We don't know how Maria Telemann reacted when she became aware of the situation with Calvert in Zellerfeld, although we can safely assume she reacted poorly. We do know that seven years later, when Telemann was 20 and preparing to enter Leipzig University, she again demanded that he, quote, leave music and abandon his entire musical household, unquote, in order to study law. But in the end, she was no more successful turning her son away from music when he was 20 than when he was 13, and we are all the richer for that fact. Moving with dispatch. We're going to make rather quick work of the remainder of Telemann's education and his career because we must move on to tackle two big issues. The truly brain-addling amount of music he composed and the heartbreakingly low survival rate of that music. In 1697, after three years under the benevolent guidance of Superintendent Caspar Calvert, the 16-year-old Telemann moved on to the celebrated Gymnasium Adrianum in the Saxon city of Hildesheim. Once again, the school administration and Telemann's teachers treated him like the star he was. The rector of the Gymnasium Adrianum, one J. C. Losius, commissioned Telemann to compose works for the school. It was while at the Gymnasium Adrianum that Telemann developed into a professional grade composer and performer. Along with having mastered the recorder, violin, and keyboard instruments, he now took up and mastered the flute, oboe, chalumeau, that's the ancestor of the clarinet, viola da gamba, double bass, and bass trombone. He graduated in 1701 and moved to Leipzig, where at 20 he became a professional musician. He was commissioned by the mayor of Leipzig to compose music for the Nikolai Kirche and the Thomas Kirche, where Sebastian Bach would live and work from 1723 until his death in 1750. Telemann led a 40-member student Collegium Musicum that gave public concerts, entertained visiting dignitaries, and provided music for the Neue Kirche. In 1702, Telemann was appointed the director of Leipzig's Municipal Opera House, for which he composed his first major opera entitled Germanicus. Thank heavens! for Leipzig's famed coffee houses, the young Telemann must have been seriously caffeinated to keep up with his composing and performing schedule. There were problems, though, and from an expected source. The recently appointed chief musician or cantor 
of the municipality of Leipzig and its churches, one Johann Kuhnel, 1660 to 1722. For our information, it was Kuhnel who Bach replaced as cantor of Leipzig in 1723, 22 years later, but only after Telemann had turned the job down. Kuhnel was jealous of Telemann's talent, youth, and energy, and downright furious with the way Telemann was siphoning off his, Kuhnel's, students to perform for his projects, including the Collegium Musicum. Well, in 1705, at the age of 24, Telemann left Leipzig to become Kapellmeister, chief musician, for the court of Count Erdmann II of Promnitz at Sorau, which today is the town of Jari in Poland. From there, it was a succession of ever more high status jobs, culminating on July 10, 1721 when Telemann received an offer from the Hanseatic city-state of Hamburg to become the cantor of the Johannium Latin School and music director of Hamburg's five principal churches. It was one of the most prestigious musical positions in all of Germany, and having taken the job, Telemann remained there in Hamburg for the rest of his life. Jörg P. Telemann, P for prolific. According to the New Grove Dictionary of Music and Musicians, it was in Hamburg that, quote, Telemann now entered the most productive phase of his career, unquote. You know, that's nice to know, though that statement forces us to ask the rhetorical question. Was there ever a time, aside from his infancy and dying days, the Telemann was not spectacularly productive? The answer is no. Jörg Philipp Telemann was not just the most prolific composer of his time, but very likely of all time. But it wasn't just his compositional fecundity that made Telemann among the most famous and beloved musicians of his time. Writing in the New Grove Dictionary of Music and Musicians, Stephen Zone observes that Telemann, quote, remained at the forefront of musical innovation throughout his career and was an important link between the late Baroque and early classical styles. He also contributed significantly to Germany's concert life and the fields of music publishing, music education, and theory, unquote. All together, it is estimated that Telemann wrote over 3,000 works, of which a full half of them have been lost. The majority of his works still extant have gone unperformed since the years immediately following Telemann's death in 1767. In fact, it wasn't until the 1980s and the 1990s that the first accurate estimate of the number of Telemann's compositions was made. Let's do some of the numbers, mind-numbing though they may be. Telemann composed at least 20 complete annual cycles of cantatas, that is, a religious opera based on a biblical text, that's what a cantata is, for every week of the year times 20. Only 12 of these 20 cycles have survived intact. It now appears that Telemann composed some 1,700 such cantatas, of which roughly 1,400 have survived. In 1740, Telemann claimed to have composed, quote, several and 20, unquote, operas for the stage at Leipzig, 35 operas for Hamburg, and a number of others for the courts at Wiesenfels, Bayreuth, and Eisenach. When we put it all together, the numbers are stunning. Telemann claims to have composed more than 50 operas. We know for a fact that he composed 29 operas, though only nine have survived intact. Despite these losses, according to the New Grove Dictionary of Music and Musicians, quote, Telemann can be considered 
the most important composer of German language opera in the first half of the 18th century." Unquote. Telemann was no less prolific when it came to instrumental music. He composed roughly 125 orchestral suites, these are collections of dances for orchestra, about 120 concerti, tomorrow's Dr. Bob Prescribes post will focus on eight of those concerti, scores, pun intended, of other orchestral works, sonatas in five to seven parts, nearly 40 quartets, 130 trios, 87 works for solo instruments, including flute, violin, cello, etc., and some 245 pieces for keyboard. This abbreviated list of Telemann's works indicates that he composed a really absurd amount of music, but it signifies something else as well. From sacred music played in church to operas for the opera house, from orchestral music for the court to solo and chamber music for private performance. The generic, as in genre, range of Telemann's output is simply stunning, encompassing virtually every genre of music that existed at the time. How does all that music get lost? Well, it's a good question. It's an old but still painful story as to why so much of Telemann's music was lost. Simply, there was little premium placed on the music of a dead composer when Telemann passed away in 1767. Respected as he and his music were when he was alive, there was, at the time of his death, little or no concept of repertoire or canon that might have secured the preservation of Telemann's entire output. There were, as of yet, no libraries or archives extant to store, catalog, and preserve his works. Telemann's grandson, Jörg Michael Telemann, 1748 to 1831, the only musician among his heirs, took and preserved what he could. But the bulk of Telemann's huge musical estate, including well over 50 passions, Starting in 1722, Telemann composed a brand new St. Matthew Passion every four years, oratorios, serenades, operas, printed collections, etc. They were all auctioned off in Hamburg on September 6th of 1769. Some of this music survived, some of it did not. We are told that Jörg Michael Telemann himself was, quote, an honorable guardian of his grandfather's legacy, unquote. And those works he had preserved ended up in the Royal Library in Berlin, where they remain today. Among the works to have survived are an astonishing group of concerti that, like Johann Sebastian Bach's own Brandenburg concerti, employ instrumental combinations never used before or since. As previously observed, tomorrow's Dr. Bob Prescribes post will focus on eight such concerti composed by Telemann between 1710 and 1720. Until then, thank you. To sample and download one or all of my many courses on subjects musical produced by The Great Courses slash The Teaching Company, please visit my website at robertgreenbergmusic.com.